So here's the L2 with the light fixtures completed. And I'm just gonna plug this in, okay? Now the lights are on, and you can see there's a little bit of light bleed there. There's a little bit there, so you can tell that it's running, but it's not excessive. And now what I'm gonna do is just slide the fixture to the side so you can see what's going on here. All right, so I've got a potentiometer in a little 3D printed box enclosure. And this is turned all the way up, so I'm gonna turn it down. And it's a little hard to see in the video because just how LEDs work. Turn it back up. Okay, so that's a maximum intensity right there. And that's basically with the reds running at 100% and the violets running at 50% of the reds. So they dim in, uh, in unison. So there's the inside of the box here. I'll take the slot pipe out. So you can see it again. And then I'll dim it down. All right, that's all the way down. Go back up again. I'm just gonna throw the lid on without the slot pipe in there, just to show um, when it lift up on the unit. Well, it's hard to do with one hand. But I'm going to lift up here and show you that very little light gets out the bottom, and that is because of the false bottom. So you can pop the end cap off here. You see where that false bottom sits, it blocks the light. So, really, the only light that makes it around here is kind of through uh, uh, tracing or wherever you want to say it um, through the clear plastic. I'm gonna take this, uh, take the light fixtures off here, and I might have to put the phone camera down to, to do it. But I wanted to show you how this is all wired up. Okay. There's one. And there's two. Okay. Now let me get everything out of the way. Alright. So there's a four pin connector that does the interconnect between uh, this board and the reds and then the violet that goes in here and then back out through here and then back to the board. We've got a mean well. Uh, LP, LPV 6015 that's a constant voltage source so it's not really a driver it's more of a power supply because this is the driver um, and that's uh, so that provides a constant six or 15 volts at a variable uh, amperage to power the boards and you're gonna plug it in again so you can see this to do one-handed here we go and now you notice that I've installed an acrylic shield in there as well dim it down and back up again so you can go down to about you now about 10 percent so usually what I tell people to do is start it and this knob is actually a reverse so you start it at 11 o'clock and you go to about six o'clock and keep in mind that's vertical and that's about 50 percent that's where you'd start running the scrubber and then as you get more and more growth you turn it you maybe uh, you know one one hour clockwise or counterclockwise until you get to the 12 o'clock position and that's at 100 percent so you can vary the intensity to match your tank's needs and be able to run the lights longer, you get uh, longer constant filtration. And then there is one thing there, there is an indicator uh, LED on the board to tell you that the board is working. Uh, but of course you don't see that unless you crack the fixture, unless you have the fixtures open. And the other thing I didn't go over in the previous video was this little section of the board right there, where it says PWM inputs. So basically each channel one, two, and three 
is a separate PWM input port, common ground. And over here is a plus or minus 12 volts that actually can run a 5 volt uh, as well. Um, and what you can do there is if you if you want to run either a um, I'm sorry that might actually only be 12 volts I'll have to check on that but if you want to run the apex interface board which will convert 0 to 10 volts into a PWM signal you run it off of this port and if you want to run say an Arduino and you want to uh, run uh, all three uh, of the the channels at separate levels and do whatever kind of programming you want uh, that will power the Arduino as well and uh, what I will be making if you notice here that this little 3D printed box fits right into the rail on the end of the heatsink um, there is also a counter rail on the other side that you can match up and uh, that's something for people who are waiting for the L4 what you're going to see here is that the way I design these heat sinks is that they interlock. So for the L4, you're going to have a pair of these on each side. You're going to have driver, LED, LED board, and then just a go this this long jump between them would we'll just go between the two fixtures. You have one power supply coming in this side, and then the other fixtures, of course, will be on the other side, and uh, may actually be able to run them off of one. Uh, larger meanwhile uh, LPV 115 uh, so that's just a what's to come